Hello everyone, this is Todd with Natality. I want to continue on our food ladder discussion today and work up to principle number eight, which is basically to leave some space to absorb and break down what you eat and drink so that your stomach isn't completely full and that is going to stop its ability to break things down and then move things into your intestines and have things be broken down more and absorbed. And so it's an interesting idea. It sounds really simple, but when you remember why you're doing it, it makes a nice difference. A lot of people, particularly when they were young, if they had to fight for food or they were trying to get as much as they could because there wasn't enough to go around, those kinds of things, they were taught to shovel it in as fast as possible until they were almost breaking in the middle section. And that's not that useful. Um, obviously, it teaches some things that in other times become kind of a problem. Certainly, there's a time for that um, when people are struggling. But when they're not, like most people in America and Europe and those kinds of areas are doing pretty good and food is plentiful, the other problem becomes more obvious where people are overeating all the time and it can become easy to uh, gain extra weight and struggle with diet and to struggle with how you feel around food and yourself because you're no longer fighting for it all the time. And so there's some reasons why people got to that, some that you wouldn't necessarily expect. Some having to do with the way the food is made because they want to get you to buy more. So they add all kinds of things to it and they do some interesting things with sugar and colorings and caffeine and all kinds of things like that to make the food more appealing to you and to go beyond your normal satiety to where you, you know, you would normally be full and you would normally be like, hey, this is a good point to stop. There's some interesting tricks people are using to get you to eat past that as well. And so the idea here is to really think about what you're eating and to just kind of pace yourself, you know, go a little bit slower, take some time, especially if you were kind of trained into that eat as fast as you can kind of mentality, or you're using food as something like a substitute for feeling good or feeling loved or all those kinds of things. And it sounds a little corny when you say it, but you might be surprised how often people do that to make themselves feel a little better to work with their emotions through their food or to work with their mindset through their food. And of course, that can be useful at times too. I'm not saying to never do that, but there's probably a better way to handle that, you know, in terms of your social life and more importantly, how you see yourself and feeling love for yourself. Um, a lot of people were taught away from that as well, like as if you had to make everyone around you happy to feel good about yourself. It's a, it's a nice little trap people sort of set up for one another so that they can control your behavior or get you to do what they want, those kinds of things, um, and take you out of yourself, take you out of your ability to work with your own emotions. And so a better idea rather than eating to feel, feel better in that way, to play with your chemistry a little bit or to get some sugar dump, something like that, um, over time is to change how you see yourself. Notice how often you are trained into things that aren't in your best interest, but actively work against your best interest. And uh, once you can see them a little clearly and where they came from, it can be easier and easier to let it go. And after that, you can start really looking at yourself a little differently and find some positive aspects of yourself that you really like. Um, be careful not to get caught up in anger about anyone who did that to you, sort of trained you to, to act in a certain way to get their needs met over yours. Probably it happened to them too. Um, there are a lot of people that are just passing on what was trained to them. There are the full-fledged sort of narcissistic types who just think everyone should bow down to them. And that's a different situation. But a lot of people, they're just, you know, passing on what was passed on to them. So, and it's not that useful to get too pissed off at someone like that. There isn't much you can do about it. Um, although, just to slide it in here, if you're in an abusive relationship, you know, that anger might be really useful for you breaking free. But back to our conversation about uh, stopping before you're completely full. And the way you, you practice that is you just keep that in mind that the tendency is to want to eat um, past, in, in current times, past where your stomach wants you to stop and try to feel for it. And that just means take a little bit more time. Um, get in your body a little bit. Don't watch TV. Don't read the news. Don't fight with anybody. Don't consider your plans for building some kind of financial empire right at that time. It you probably takes like five to ten minutes to actually eat. Just cut that time out a little bit so that when you're actually eating, you're feeling what your body's doing. You'd be surprised how much that adds to your vitality over time. Actually getting into your body, like actually feeling it, feeling what's going on trying to feel almost your cells and feel your organs working and things like that. It really changes how you feel over time. At first, it's a bit weird and it takes a little while to reconnect. But once you do, getting into your body can be um, accessing a different kind of vitality and picking up your energy as well. 
Um, that's a little tricky to do if you're in pain all the time. Although over time, as you break back into it and you get a little bit more vitality from that mechanism, it can help you deal with some of the chronic health problems that you might have. Um, and there's a lot more we can say about that at some point. But it is a little tricky if you're in a lot of pain to want to be in your body much. Um, and there's a lot of ways to start working on that. And paying attention to your body is one of them. You also start to see where the root causes of the pain might be coming from. And that can be helpful for diagnosis and for your own efforts in trying to make yourself feel better. So there's a lot of interesting things about that. And one of the ways to practice that, obviously, is when you're eating. Feel your body and just really get a sense of when you're full. Even play with it. Make it a little game like, how long can I stretch this out? At what point do I actually feel full? Because often you're not going to get that feeling of fullness for 10, 20 minutes after you've eaten something. You can train that back in. You'll start to feel it sooner as you play with this mechanism. You don't want to make every meal seven hours long while you're trying to figure out when you're full. But it's an interesting thing to play with, and it reconnects you to your body. You want to be careful not to eat too much um, because it breaks down in some ways, like there becomes a pressure on your stomach when you're so full. If you just think about all those juices going in there to break down the food and the motion, what it needs to like easily pass things through. If you fill it up too quickly, you can imagine it's a little bit harder for those things to get in there, work their way through everything, that it might work a little better to eat a little slower for most people. There are, of course, people who can eat rocks, <laughs> metaphorically, you know, where it just seems really easy to break things down. But you might notice, like, if you really fill your body, that you digest better, and then you feel a little better afterwards. You don't get so tired. You don't get so exhausted. You don't feel the fatigue. You don't all of a sudden start craving other kinds of things to sort of get your energy back up because your body isn't so taxed in the digestion process itself, the actual breaking down and absorbing. So it's an interesting, interesting thing to work through. So... Keep that in mind when you eat. This is step eight. And it's something like don't overeat. You know, don't burden your stomach and your intestines with too much food too quickly. Um, some people really get into this in terms of what foods combined well for them. And that might be something to play with as well. Do certain combinations make you feel really full? Do certain combinations make you feel a little bloated and gassy? Do certain combinations make it feel like it's, it takes longer to, to get through your food? And once you play with that a little bit, it can be easier to not overburden things and then you can take a little bit more time and give your stomach a little time to work through what it's doing in a little space. This space concept is important for all kinds of things. It's hard to put more things in where there's no space and that goes for your life as well as your body and, and things like that. So take some time to allow your body to tell you that it's full and to give it some space to process what it's going through and digest. All right, this has been Todd with Nitality. I hope this finds you well. Stay vital, my friends.